Jones. But now meet Sharonda Holloway, a woman disturbed by her husband's recent attitude shift. Intent on discovering the reason behind his transformation, Sharonda teams up with cheaters to resolve the chaos. Sharonda Holloway, age 22. A deputy clerk worried that her husband's recent mood swings are symptomatic of a troubled relationship. He usually want to go out and do stuff with me. Like, not all the time he would want to go shopping, but uh, some of the times I would ask him he would want to go. Um, now he's just quick to send me on. He don't want to go. He's always tired. Um, he never have time. We don't do that kind of stuff anymore because he always out. Um, every off day he gets, he wants to spend it with his homeboys. Uh, not an off night with me. He would uh, leave on an off night and saying he's going to come back and not come home till the next morning. Saying he was with his homeboys, but we were supposed to spend that time together. Yes, he, he's starting to treat me different. Um, I feel like he's put me on a back burner, you know, like put me to the side. Um, we had started arguing a lot lately. He would always be in a bad mood, like he didn't want to be around. So I kind of, I mean, it lasted for like weeks. So I kind of, you know, started thinking, you know, then something ain't right, something's going on. He's um, treating me like I'm just a home girl. Or, um, we're just dating, um, not like a wife. If the worst happens, um, I want a divorce because I'm just 22 and I married him because I love him and I thought he loved me too. Um, I feel that I have my whole life ahead of me and if he's gonna cheat, he's gonna continue to cheat. Um, he don't need me to cheat. I mean, we can be divorced and he can go and do what he wants to do. Patrick Holloway, age 31, a grocery stalker suspected of betraying the sanctity of marriage. Investigation day five. Cheaters investigators consider all possible scenarios before dispatching field operatives to the suspect's place of employment. Waiting patiently in the grocery store parking lot, agents on stakeout spot suspect Patrick Holloway emerging from the front door. Still wearing knee pads from night stocking duties, suspect Holloway accompanies an unknown woman to her vehicle. Courteously, suspect Holloway helps the lady unload a cart of groceries into a car. After completing the task, he then pulls out his cell phone and appears to program the young woman's telephone number into his cellular phone. The two chat for a brief time before suspect Holloway says goodnight and walks back to the front door. After re-entering the grocery store, suspect Holloway inconspicuously peers out the window to watch the mysterious woman drive off into the night. Investigation Day 7. Back on the case, cheaters' agents revisit Suspect Holloway's workplace in search of new evidence. Several hours pass before Suspect Holloway's companion, whose identity is withheld, emerges from her parked vehicle. She walks over to Suspect Holloway's car and greets him with a big hug and a kiss. Ready with another surprise, the female companion opens her back door and gives her new boyfriend several balloons, perhaps in celebration of Valentine's Day. Visibly unimpressed with the gesture, Suspect Holloway suggests that she put the balloons back in the car so he may attend to the business at hand. After a while, Suspect Holloway returns to his car to retrieve several sheets of paper. Unsure of the contents, cheaters inspectors watch carefully as the couple converses while reviewing the unknown documents. A short time later, Suspect Holloway and his love interest share a few kisses before deciding to call it a night. The female companion again presents the balloons to Suspect Holloway before the two share one last goodbye smooch. On the way home to his wife, Suspect Holloway removes the evidence from his vehicle. Investigation Day 11. Using GPS tracking devices, Cheaters Intelligence pinpoint Suspect Holloway's exact location and dispatch mobile units to the scene. Once a visual is attained, Cheaters crews cautiously follow Suspect Holloway into the parking lot of a local pharmacy. Assuming the location to be a predetermined meeting place, Cheaters agents spot Suspect Holloway signaling to his companion. She immediately starts up her car and follows close behind her boyfriend. Suspect Holloway shows little regard for the truth in this recorded phone call with his wife, Sharonda. Okay. Uh, Peter 
Rogers withdraws field agents and arranges a tell-all meeting with Sharonda. With Patrick's secret activities now exposed, Cheaters meets with Sharonda and provides a detailed report on the facts. Employing her strength and courage, Sharonda prepares to contend with her emotions. Sharonda, thank you for being here tonight. I know from our conversation earlier that the last few weeks, even months, have been very trying for you. You're in a new marriage yes. with Patrick, and now it's approaching eight months, seven months. You've been married. It'll be eight months, March 18th. Can you describe to me some of the events that led to your contacting our show? Well, he started acting different towards me, um, less attention, less quality time. Um, I would find numbers in his wallet or doctor excuses, excusing him from work three days, but he left those three days as if he was going to work. Um, girls calling his phone, knocking on my door. Knocking on your door? Mm-hmm, one o'clock in the morning. Sharonda, that being said, we do have some of the information that you've asked us to gather. Now, I know you're aware that this has the potential to be upsetting. Are you ready to take a look at some of that now? Yes. Thank you. Sharonda, on this day of the investigation, we had detectives that observed Patrick while he was at work. He was seen at this particular point in time escorting a young lady out of the grocery store. He assists her with some of the items that she had purchased, loads them in her car, but there seems to be an exchange before she gets into her car to leave. Mm -hmm. And after that's been done, mm -hmm. he turns and enters. Now, what is his function at the grocery store? Do you know what his He's job? a nice stock. He's not supposed to be taking groceries out to the car. That's not his position. Okay. While on the outside, it may seem like a simple thing. Right. This service does not fall within his job description. Mm -hmm. On this day of the investigation, we were again outside of Patrick's place of employment. Mm -hmm. The same young lady okay. that was there on a previous occasion does show up. Okay. And she greets him with a hug. Okay. Now, this will begin making sense shortly. She gives him some balloons. Okay. Because this was very close to if it was not on Valentine's, Valentine's. Day. Valentine's. Oh, okay. Okay. He excused himself. Okay. Came back with an item. There's another exchange, so it seemed like he did present her with something. Okay. And again, before they leave from this exchange, mm -hmm. she takes his gifts out of her car again, presents those to him, another hug, before she drives off. Okay. Now, this is interesting. I don't okay. know if you can see it right there. Mm -hmm. We had the detective continue to follow him. Mm -hmm. But as he was driving down the highway, mm -hmm. you can see he discards some of those items. Okay. <laughs> On this day of the investigation, Sharonda, our detectives followed Patrick. As he arrives at a pharmacy, I don't really think that's the important part. Mm -hmm. What's more important is that he doesn't even really stop the car. He does a drive through right. almost. And this young lady was waiting to meet him. Okay. They followed one another to a park area that was close by. And here we can observe some of their activities as they're spending some time at the park. And before she leaves, you can see another brief exchange right, between okay. the two of them. Right, okay. Now, I know that's... Mm -hmm. While it may not seem like much, mm -hmm. I, know that, I know that gives you all the information you really I need. need. That's enough. Okay. We know that this evening, Sharonda, he's in the company of this young lady again. Okay. We've gathered the information that you've asked us to gather so you can have some insight okay. into what's been taking with place Ryan. behind your okay. back. But we can also provide you with an opportunity to confront Patrick okay. in the presence of this young lady. Right. Would you like an opportunity to do Yes, that? yes, take me to him. Let me call the detective see if we can get an idea of where he is right now. Yeah. All right, we'll just load up and be on standby. 
All right. Let me know if you have anything. Good. Okay. All right. They're following them right now. Okay. We have a detective that's following them. They have not stopped any place okay. just yet. We're going to go ahead and load up and be on standby. Okay. Are you ready to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Come with me. It's Greco. So he was picked up. We're moving towards you. Okay. Okay. They stopped. They're at a restaurant right now. Okay. We're rolling right now. Are they inside? Okay, they're on the left side of the restaurant, but they're sitting by a window, so we have to go in through the right side. Okay. We're looking for a number shirt with a number eight on the back, and she's got a pink top on. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody. All right, I see you. All right, everybody. Come on, Sean. You think you in here door, man? Seven months and he got kids, he don't even take her. Yeah, you wanted me to stay home tonight so you could be with her. You bought yourself a Valentine, you couldn't even buy me none. What the f is your problem? I want your whole family to know. Yeah, old church boy. You wanna rap, you wanna rap about church stuff, and then you wanna come over here and admit, commit a dutcher, man. I don't even know you. I know you probably don't even know me. What's your name? My name is Sharonda. I'm not even claiming that. Lose it. And lost me. I know about the park. His baby was sick that week in the hospital. But he wanna be out with you. Yeah, not you with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we married. We married. We stay right down here in the park at Whitwood. We stay right down here in the park at Whitwood. Yeah, we married. You been cheating with this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You been cheating? Yeah. 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 Coming up next. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna fight on me? Cause you cheat. Cause you soft. Good. Call the police. I got assaulted this morning. He showed me in front of my daughter and asked me if I want to die. Because I asked what I asked who called him talking about food. I'm so sorry. He nothing, girl. He got a 50 cent ass job and he about to lose it. Because he clocked in on his job and he leaves while he on the clock and they don't know. I don't got nothing to say to you. You low down, you dirty. They leaving now. Please. Ma'am, ma'am, please don't touch me. Okay, just get, tell them to get out. Tell them to get out of my face. Ma'am, I'm sorry they in your face like this, but they had to show me what he was doing, and they showed me. He's no good. We, are, we ain't even been married a year, and he out here sleeping around, and I knew he was sleeping around. T-A-P-A-T-I-O. He ain't even worth it, girl. Go find you somebody that's worth it, that got a job in the car. He don't have a car. He stay with his sister. He so homeless. Was he, he was driving my car. That's my Ford Escort. I work for the county. I pay for that. He was driving my car. That's how low down he is. I don't want to talk to you. Okay. Please don't get in my face. Well, do you, we just want to get your side of the story. I don't, I don't have nothing to talk to you about. Thank you. Okay, well, y'all just let her assault me. I would have talked to you if she wouldn't put her hands on me. Okay, well, she uh, did I, 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 that. I apologize for that. I got it. I see what you did for her. Took her to the park where you took me. You low down. We ain't even been married a year. She busted my Worthless head. You finna lose your job because they, they gonna know about you clocking in and leaving to go be with these females. You ain't finna have nothing. You don't have nothing to say to me. Cops will be here. It's over. I, I know what I need to know. It's over. I want him to stay away from me. He don't have nothing else to say to me. It's over. As calm as you were. I didn't expect that to come out It's of like a relief. I've been waiting to burst and get that all out of me. It's a relief. It is, sir, to just know that it's not my fault. It's his fault. He wants to be ignorant, and he want to go out, and he want to abuse what he had going. That's him. He got busted cold on national TV, and he have nothing to say to his mother, his cousins, his aunt, because he busted. He been lying to everybody for so long, saying he's not cheating. He's so in love with me. But if you love someone, you don't hit someone. You don't fuss with someone because you want to be with someone else. 
That's not love. But now, please meet Cameron Spaulding, a young lady whose trusting nature is put to the test by her shifty boyfriend. Needing a second opinion on his questionable character, Cameron asks cheaters to step in. Cameron Spaulding, age 22. A student worried that her boyfriend is not giving his full effort to their relationship. Love is that first time that you see a person. Sometimes love can be love at first sight, um, hopeless romantic. And I really do believe that when I saw and you know, saw that he was in a different light and he actually wanted to be with me, I was like, this is the guy that I need to be with. And I've been together for about two years. Um, he's a great guy. I love him to death. Um, basically, he's the love of my life. I'm ready to get married. We've been talking about it, but lately things have changed just a little bit. Probably over the last three months or so, it seems like. Um, it's been just weird lately. Um, we haven't really been, we've been intimate, but not as intimate as we were before, you know? And um, it seems like I can't talk to him. He seems like a different person. Um, our conversations are short. Um, it seems like when he says he loves me, he really doesn't mean it. Like, I don't feel it like it used to be. I don't know. It just seems like he's not there anymore. And I can't talk to him anymore like I used to be able to. And I don't want to tell him anything that's going to run him away because I want us to work. It hurts me really bad that I don't know where he is, that he doesn't talk to me, that he doesn't want to see me. And I just don't understand. I don't understand why he's being the way that he is. And I need to have some closure. I need to know what's going on. Are you tired of being cheated on? Visit www.nocheatersdate.com and create your own profile in our online community. It's a fun and easy way to meet faithful singles in your area. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 26. A physical therapist breaking his commitment to an exclusive relationship. Investigation day five. Cheaters detectives initiate the case with little immediate success. Directing all available resources toward the development of leads back at headquarters, Cheaters field crews maintain a close watch on the suspect whose identity is withheld. Amid growing speculation by Cheaters investigators on the validity of the case, the suspect unexpectedly departs his residence. As Cheaters closely scrutinizes all of his activities, he runs almost immediately into the arms of an unidentified woman, and the two walk off hand in hand. Cheaters agents follow the suspect and his companion to a nearby coffee shop and watch closely as the couple takes a seat outside. The suspect concentrates on getting his companion his full attention. He gently runs his hands through the woman's hair. Much later, the suspect and his companion leave the establishment and head for a more suitable location across the street. The conversation and drinks flow as the two get to know each other. As the late hour approaches, the couple decides to leave the bar and return to the suspect's home. The two lovebirds have more than a little trouble saying goodnight. After their extended farewell, the suspect's companion departs. Investigation Day 8. Cheaters' crews are back at the suspect's residence this evening in hopes of gathering more evidence. The suspect emerges from his apartment and is picked up by an unknown vehicle. Cheaters' PIs track the car to a local restaurant where the suspect walks arm in arm with who appears to be the same woman observed several days earlier. A long while later, the suspect exits the eatery with his female companion, whose identity is withheld. Making a night of it, the couple stops by a video rental outlet where they pick up the latest release. After taking their time making a selection, the suspect and his companion make their way back to the suspect's domicile with Cheaters' P.I.s right on their tails. 
The suspect takes his new girlfriend by the arm and leads her inside, where she remains until much later that evening. Investigation day 12. Cheater's agents are once again assembled at the suspect's place of residence. The suspect and his female companion get into her car and are followed a short distance away to a local movie theater. They are not seen until a few hours later when the suspect and his companion stroll the neighboring shops. The suspect's sneaky disposition is clearly displayed in this recorded phone conversation with Cameron. Hello? Hey, baby. Hey, what's up? Um, I'm just looking through the paper here. About what time did you want to go to the movie tonight? Movie? Yeah, remember? No, my little brother's football game tonight. What? We made plans for Friday night for us to go to the movies. Oh, no, come on. His last game was away. I didn't get a chance to go to that one. I'm going to this one. You promised. Oh, don't be like that, Cameron. Don't be like that. Before we get your car to the game? Yeah, we can hang out over my house. Cheaters investigators cap off the inquiry and contact Cameron to inform her of her boyfriend's questionable behavior. After the break, the confrontation. After corroborating all of Cameron's initial suspicions, Cheaters arranges a meeting to fill her in on the details. Fearful of an unfavorable outcome, Cameron looks to a higher power for support. Cameron, thanks for being here tonight. I know that the last couple of weeks have been very difficult and challenging for you. The reason that we do have you here this evening is because our detectives do have information. It's the information that you asked us to gather, and I want to ask you and just make sure that you're 100% sure that you want to go forward with this. Yes, I want to go forward with this. Okay. On this particular day, he was observed leaving, and obviously he was meeting a young lady. They greet one another. After he greets this young lady, they walk around the corner and go to a coffee shop. At a coffee shop? He doesn't even they, like coffee. For a large period of time, they were just sitting having coffee. After some time, you can see a gesture of affection. We'll be all right. You're doing good, all right? On this day, we again have a detective that's outside of apartment. He's picked up by this woman yet again. That bitch. They go to a restaurant. As they walk in, they're arm in arm. We have positively identified this young woman. I despise her. As, yeah. I despise her with all my heart. The times that he tells you he's not available to go to the movies, evidently he does have the time because he goes with this young woman to a theater after spending some time inside, I don't know what they saw, they come out, and this evening, I'm sorry to tell you, but after that, they do go back to the apartment. Are you serious? Having sex together? They had gone in that evening. Mm, it's over with. It is over. It is over. Relationship is over, everything is over. All I needed was to prove. But another reason that we are here is again with this young lady this what? evening. Again? I don't... All right, you're gonna be fine. Okay, look at me, look at me. Hey, Cameron. We're here with you. Where are they? Okay, let's find out. You're gonna be fine. We're all here with you, okay? Yeah, we just finished up the second interview. Tell me what you got. Okay, all right. She went She went to his house. They're together. They're following him in the cars right now. Okay, okay, listen, we'll load up, we'll load up. Just call me as soon as they stop someplace. All right, but we'll start heading to that. Okay, where? 
All right, we'll be right there. Come with me. Yeah. They're stopping? Okay. I know where it is. We're on our way. Okay. They're stopped at the ATM. I don't know if we're going to make it there. How quick can we get there? Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, we missed them. They're gone. Uh, and we were just, uh, I didn't think we were that far away. All right. Well, you're still with them, right? Okay. Yeah, no, she's holding up. Let's just, just make this happen. All right. I'm not gonna let him get away. Yeah, what do you got? They stopped at a store and they're getting some beer. Where is it now? They're only about a, about a mile up. Go north on the street. Okay, Go. We're moving now. We're moving okay, now. Okay, we're moving right now. He's out there outside. He's pumping gas. He's in one of the stalls. It's a silver car. We're coming up on it right now. I see it on the right. Right there. That's 7 Eleven. You see him? The B. Look for the B. Down, hands down. We don't need that kind of language. It's it's over. Why are you bringing him here, man? What is this shit? Man? No, this isn't this isn't what we did. This is what you did. I didn't do anything, man. Oh, Bullshit. Girl. Who you love? With not Who are you with? I love you. It's all love, girl. I love then you. Then why the fuck are you with her? Because I'm going to a costume party. Tell her right now you don't love her. Coming up next, the conclusion. Love, then why the fuck are you with her? Because I'm going to a costume party. Tell her right now you don't love her. She you knows it's all love. Me and her cool. She know that. She knows it's all love. Me and her so cool. You but do you back. think that you can that pimp cool means? and, you know, I'm, I'm pop your collar and then have her and me I'm too? I'm How the fuck you going to do all that shit to me? Huh? You had three months to say something to me. How the fuck am I gonna say something to you when we don't even fucking talk? What the yeah, fuck are you right. doing? On, Butterfly you know, wings you know, on your back and shit? Gay mother. Fuck right. you. Now I gotta be gay. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck me. Fuck you. Fuck me. I gotta home. Who the fuck you love? Does her. Who the fuck you love? She just told me. You call me a bitch ass bumblebee nigga. I said, look. Hey, you know what? I'm through with you. Can you guys have a conversation? You didn't get nothing to say to me for three months about what we supposed to have had. And okay. I ain't, and I don't all know right. nothing about none of that. All right, like you said, like you said, like you said. And you little short friend here and just jump all over me, and I'm supposed to be the bad guy. Uh, Nicky, you need to shut the fuck peace, up, because he's more of a man than you'll ever be. Bounce with his ass, then. I, I don't give a damn. Because like I said, you ain't had nothing to say to me for three months, and then all of a sudden you jump on me. Because you're the bumblebee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, the bumblebee. bumblebee. Yeah, I'm, the bumblebee. I'm chilling with the bumblebee. The bumblebee. I ain't mad at you. And she's You're in the motherfucking Zorro outfit. It's a gladiator. That gladiator okay. gonna stomp on your okay. ass. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, get, get the fuck out of my face. You, know, you motherfucking yeah, high and all that down. bullshit. She don't, don't let me call the motherfucking cops on you. You need to stop smoking that weed. I, like I told you before, man, you stay right there, you will get ran over. Okay, that's enough. Can you wait just off for a second? Can you have a conversation with her? I'm through with it, I man. Underst I understand that. I'm through with but it. But listen. All this new information. Which was you doing? wanted out of this relationship. I'm not doing nothing. No. I'm hanging out with her. I think what? you need to step outside uh, and talk to me. You ain't gonna say nothing to me for three months. This is supposed to be all about my, now it's all of my problems. Why? Now it's all Why haven't I been saying problem. anything to you? Why haven't I been saying anything to you? Yeah, she's spitting on me, man. Why ain't you been saying nothing to me? Why haven't I been saying anything to you? You had me? three months. You ain't seen me in three months. You trying to say? She's quick. She ready to go. You know what? Fuck you. Go ahead and be with her. You the bitch. Go ahead with your bitch. Get the fuck on. Get the fuck on. Get the fuck on. Oh, get the fuck on. Yeah. 
Get the fuck on! Get the fuck on! Get the fuck on! Get the fuck on! Bye! See ya! Bye! 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 Get the fuck on! Fucking trash ass bitch! I bet you anything he'll call me at the end of the night talking about Cameron, I love you, Cammy, you know we're supposed to be together, blah, 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 and all that. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see about all that. He means nothing to me anymore. And in a way, God knew. God knew. What do you think God was trying to teach you? Not to put your trust in one person not to put your trust in one person because that one person which is man just can destroy you you're only supposed to put your trust in god and i lost out on my religion there you know so that was that was my fault that right there i will take the blame for that but everything else that he did and this whole little shenanigan tonight and everything oh it is so totally over between us to learn more about